Okay. Guys, let's. Let's get back together. So, um, all right. So, the part of design we talked about uh, last session, in particular, talked about the OBJ model, right? So, thinking about um, how we can model in individual objects and uh, you know uh, load them hopefully. So, you did this in the labs, and we'll do so more in um, the assignment. Um, but obviously, one of the challenges we didn't talk about is okay, how do you relate all those models, right? So, I mean. Um, for example, you have you have an example that you did yourself, including some sort of building, uh, landscape, trees, clouds, and all that kind of jazz. And let's put lighting on top to make it really uh, complex. So how do you bring that all um, together? Is there? Do you guys have any intuition of how that works? So far, because it, but maybe actually very intuitive for people who have an experience with uh, Blender or um, any of the other modeling tools that are out there. So the idea is there, um, we need to have some sort of mechanism that allows us to represent a hierarchy, right, between all those components. So having a sort of overall world representation and then attach some lighting to it. You know, like we talk about different lighting types, like directional lights, so we need to identify this one, or spotlights perhaps. Uh, what's the other one? What's another element we probably need to include in any um, kind of world representation from a graphics point of view? Directional light. Yeah, light. Yeah, cool. In, in addition to light, what's the other important thing? Let's assume light is covered. Directional materials. Uh, yeah. What else? Materials. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's 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 do the materials thing by having index pointers for materials. So if you have n materials, you can have one pointer to them. So we covered that. Um, what else? Animation. If you want to have cool. that in yeah. static. Animation, yep. Yeah. So, but l l think about the global. What is what this be a? Um, it would be a singleton in your um, in your in your world model. What is another aspect apart from lighting that's kind of super important? Camera. Camera, right? So you need to have a viewer perspective, view uh, perspective, which is uh, uh, unique as well. So it's something that needs to be considered as well. From which perspective are we looking at the world, and why is it important the perspective? Apart from obviously seeing something, what's why is it from a from a from a tec technical point of important? You don't want to render everything; you want to render what's in front of you. Exactly right. So get rid of stuff you actually don't see, right? So it's in a three D scene, but it's not relevant for this particular perspective, right? Because you know of the zoom level or the maximum or minimum uh, viewing range that we have specified in our code and so on. So it's a good opportunity to uh, optimize your 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 model, right? Your representation. Well, uh, on that subject, yep. Yep. Um, is it useful not to render stuff that's behind you, or do you reckon that whatever the camera or the player in this case can just turn around and you won't have time to load in the time the player turns around? Yeah, that's right. So, um, well, since, since the rendering happens in Ideally, in your shaders, right? So you will need to re-render any move, you know, any animation along this line. You just, you're not just uh, turning around 90 degrees, 180 degrees in, in in immediacy, right? It's not so much you're pressing a. If you, for example, Have press. You seen Counter Strike Go players? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, but I think I think if you slow it down, you see it's still a notion of animation, right? Yeah. So it's it's different from pressing the V button and switching perspective in a in a when you ride a race car or something like this, right? Then you don't have a transition. So uh, I I could see it more relevant there, but you since you will be uh, rendering this animation anyway, I don't see any value of. Um, um, yes, you keep the model loaded, definitely, but the question is, are you rendering it? And the answer um, would be delegate the rendering to the shader and then not render it until you need it. But you will keep the, uh, the model loaded, right? So you have it uh, available for, um, um, you know, 
for, for rendering. So you're not just starting to model the model when you think you need it. Yeah, so you have some uh, super duper, uh, super duper uh, special effects for fire or water or something that's uh, resource intensive. Mm -hmm. And then you would just be rendering it when you see it. Yeah. You wouldn't calculate anything unless you're seeing it. That's right, yes. Objecting viewpoints? Super important for AAA games. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, fragment shader, it does amelioration for every, uh, not for every pixel. Yeah. Is that every pixel on the, uh, uh, for the object you uploaded, or is it for every uh, pixel so from the camera's perspective? The uh, camera perspective. So because that's the out, that's um, basically providing the rustered output that's uh, you know uh, delivered to the screen de facto. It's your last opportunity to interfere with the uh, screen output yeah. from OpenGL. Um, uh, one more question. Yep. Oh my god. I forgot the question. Um, Perhaps he comes back. Uh, right. Uh, do you uh, use ray casting to uh, figure out if something is within the view, or do you just calculate it based on the uh, view angle, of the, like the viewport of the camera? Viewport of the camera is the default way. So yes, but the interesting thing is that, or the good thing is that, mm, you actually spot on because that's that's kind of one of the things that's solved by uh, the mechanism we're talking yeah, about today. Because what if you have reflections, or what if you have okay. uh, walls? Okay, that that's it. that's the effect side of things, right? So that's where you have, you know, um, but if you have a um, let's say um, solid body model with some sort of ambient light, <laughs> minimum assumption, then you just use the angle of the viewport to determine what you actually see. But of course, if you have secondary effects, uh, yeah, then it depends on the implementation of that particular model. We talk about this, the different variants of uh, how we could have, um, you know, reflections and so on, right? So, and, and um, color bleeding and other light effects. So in that case, yes, you, that's a bit more involved in calculating actually the uh, resulting um, color output in the fragment shader. Um, but that's... It would be built into a engine that we may be using, but that's built on top of OpenGL. So you, it, it really depends on what you're actually using to render your particular scene. Yeah, I'm asking out of curiosity yeah. uh, of what the engines are doing. You probably, yeah, that's a good one. The game engine is a nice one. Yeah, probably should be I, I won't be programming this. I'll be using uh, How do you some know? Uh, engine or tool. I won't be making gigantic games in OpenGL. Oh, really? Probably not. Wait until the extent. So, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> 72 hours. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. right. So that's probably something we should cover in more uh, depth. Unfortunately, yeah, so, okay, perhaps some, some uh, unity related talk. Um, I note that down as, a, as an input. Um, <laughs> but I think it's easy. By your exam, you fail. No, no, it's. <laughs> No, again, we, we, in fact, it's the exam uh, will now be in your favor since we opened up the second assignment. We need to make it a bit broader and a bit more accessible. Um, cool. So, no, the, the idea, what I want to chat about here is, and uh, you may or may not use it, for example, in your second assignment or, you know, ever. Um, no, not true. You will probably use it because uh, most of the modeling frames like Unity have, have it built in any way. Um, that's the scene graph, and that's precisely the thing that ties everything up, right? So we have some of, you know, the world, the scene, if you like, um, or the, the perspective on the world, including camera, lighting, um, objects, their orientation, um, their interdependencies, and so on. And uh, the key idea is there, how we can model a scene, uh, a complex scene, without much um, fuss. For example, if we have a... Um, a entity, let's say a human body, right? So that uh, consists of multiple components such as the torso, arms, limbs, and hands, and all that kind of stuff. The, there's a dependency between the different components, right? So if you, uh, if you are modeling for, or if you're animating them, for example, right? So just by moving my arm, moving my arm implies a translation on my hand, even though I'm not actively using my hand for anything else. So I'm not performing any rotation or any other sort of uh, transformation on my, my hand. But nevertheless, since it's dependent, 
of uh, my limb, my right uh, um, forearm, for example, we still need to um, dele or, um, um, delegate, yeah, um, inherit basically, right, that that particular movement uh, to this leaf component hand, if you will, if you want. And that's precisely one of the aspects that's, uh, that um, the hierarchy, hierarchy modeling um, is about here, the idea. So instead of doing everything by hand, so meaning figuring out, okay, if I move my body, what are the components I need to move in order to make that happen, and I'll manually do that, um, you, you kind of automating this task. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to represent large number of you know, crowds, for example, or um, large number of animated objects, uh, or anything that's remotely reaching a level of complexity that's not surmountable. You spend more time debugging your animations than creating the scene, right? The entire um, game. And of course, that is not only including the uh, transformations that are associated with a particular object, but also uh, properties, right? So we talked about um, groups, for example, in OB OBJ, which has that element already, where you can group individual faces and apply you know, some material properties to them, right? Which could be a reflection behavior uh, or textures and so on, right? So it has elements of that one. We have this hierarchy notion there. Um, but you can also go further and actually build dependencies between individual objects. And that's going beyond what OBJ has to offer. This is only on model level, right? So um, the kind of the, 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 the lowest level of uh, abstraction in, a way, in an object sense is kind of OBJ. But if you think about the bigger scene, that's not something that OBJ captures, right? If you have a tree a building and a mountain and clouds and so on. That's something um, where the relationship between those objects, which are defined in individual models, and you want to retain that flexibility because different people may develop different models, are integrated into a coherent uh, scene in, the, in terms of the relationship, um, and which allows it for you to make particular market transformations incredibly easy, right? So by shifting a perspective, um, all it will be applied to the entire hierarchy of objects, um, and instead of you explicitly dealing with, you're just turning or you're just changing um, a particular branch of that entire hierarchy. So. Obviously, you don't code that yourself. Surprise, surprise. Um, well, you can, um, but the, and the principles will be outlined later. But the idea is to use a tool for precisely that purpose, uh, in which you basically um, define that hierarchy, load individual objects, attach them to that hierarchy, and then perform your, um, your um, operations that you, if you uh, intend to do. And one of those tools is called Open Scene Graph. It's probably the most prominent one. Any other? Thoughts, objectives, no? Does anyone come across this tool? Yeah. Um, so it seems to be incredibly popular, yet that's the most amazing bit. There's no official specification for its file format. So the only way you do it, you need to actually look into either, no, the standard suggestion of those guys is, yeah, you build your uh, hierarchical graph model, then you export it, then you look at the file format, and then you understand what's happening. And um, that's kind of what the FAQ says. So, so much about, um, Standardization in the open open source world, so you need to look at the source code. So, but um, not something that discourages us generally. But the point is, you may not have any use use that anyway right now for this course. But I will. I want to share you um, share with you the intuitions behind it, and that's why we are looking at it. But the standard tree structure for all those tools and Open Scene Graph is only one of them because most of them are actually built into their corresponding products. So it's not really the standard as since every, every tool you use has its own representation of the scene graph. Uh, so the conceptual insights are the most important bits. Generally, there's some sort of root node that sits, you know, that defines the, 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 the world. Um, so it a, has a kind of tree-like um, structure. Um, <coughs> and light and a, a camera attached to it on the top level, right? So that's the kind of the two uh, kind of singleton-ish uh, concepts that are um, representing the world. I say it with care because you could have multiple cameras, but I ignore that fact for now. Um, and then you have some sort of object relationships that are modeled separately as some sort of group. And the idea is here that you have a, uh, for example, a landscape and it has clouds, it has a, um, a ground plane, for example, and attached to the plane you have uh, trees. Um, there's no, well, you know, the trees may, for example, have, have leaves and so on but you may also have uh, uh, fences and so on. And then all the dependent properties are modeled down to the 
leaf level, which would be just the individual mesh uh, or individual kind of the individual uh, yeah mesh that's that's sitting at the very bottom of uh, that representation. So you need to model the entire um, hierarchy of objects that are involved. And the idea is then when we do any sort of modification on any of those levels, um, for example, changing the texture or lighting uh, for the um, for the sky or for the for the yeah for the sky, for example, then it would be applied to all components that are attached to that sky concept, if you like, right to that group, right? So all the clouds and uh, uh, background, yeah, I don't know, um, yeah, come up with any. Well, landscape is probably easier, where you have everything. If the lighting changes, that uh, everything that sits on landscape is affected by it. Um, yeah, uh, would the player be uh, uh, would the player be within the world, or would the player be a separate thing? It would be within the world as well. So the player would be affected by changes as well. The lighting changes, the player's perspective, the things change as well. The player would just be a branch here, somewhere down that hierarchy. And if you uh, manipulate the player, it will not affect anything upwards in the hierarchy, or higher than the player itself, right? So you as a player, if you move and so on, it doesn't affect the world directly, but you will be still part of that world, meaning the world changes, you will be affected, right? So somewhat, some earthquake and we suddenly have some sort of lateral translation, then you'll probably be affected as well as, as, as one of the branch of those, uh, uh, this, this uh, scene graph representation. Another, another example is if you have a game in the world that rotates around. Yeah. Yeah. All the objects attached to the world they yeah. have follow along. Yeah. Not follow. That's yeah. yeah. That's right. Or be uh, static, for example. That right. So yeah. So the relationship to the to the parent object is always retained. So the idea is really you model everything in this thing, right? So um, a thing, right? That's the key idea. Um, yeah. And that's basically pretty much it. So if you have some sort of matrix manipulation here, this is pushed downwards into the individual. Uh, uh, um, children basically and uh, performed uh, on those as well right so in this way we can separate the the world from the individual models because we don't we can just want those the models as they are and just uh, delegate the application of the uh, matrix transformations um, to those individual uh, branches or meshes ultimately that's the key idea um, anything else I wanted to say there yeah so that's that's the rough idea um, yeah, yeah, so that that's would be the principal algorithm if a uh, modification is passed down. For, so for each of the children, you would, for example, um, um, multiply it with the passed down parent matrix and then hand, hand it down further to the next lower branch in the hierarchy. So it's kind of penetrating the entire, entire tree. Um, cool, we have this um, combined, so... So yeah, of course. So we both have um, delegation across uh, single uh, specialization, so single um, children, but also across groups. So if we have um, groups, they uh, their role is just to retain consistency within this part of the library, uh, this this hierarchy, not library hierarchy. So basically, pass down any uh, matrix uh, modification downwards. Um, and there's obviously a set um, of leaf loads that are, that are quite relevant. Um, generally called geometric uh, nodes, um, camera lighting, and the point is simply they can't contain any more children, right? This is the end of the very um, hierarchy. The um, characteristics of nodes are actually not, or the, the properties and so on, are actually not uh, constrained, so it can be anything that's somewhat relevant to the rendering environment that you have, right? So if we're talking about OpenGL, for example, uh, we can represent line sequence, point size, and so on. So all those properties can then be represented in some sort of, in, in the scene graph as well, including passive reference to shaders, uh, textures, uh, material information. Um, yeah, so basically that's the, that's the key idea. In fact, if you model your scene graph, the first thing is you want to figure out, okay, which of the um, states in the OpenGL pipeline do we modify for this particular object that we are, um, or um, that, that we are uh, modeling, and basically keep the reference to that one in this on this particular node in this hierarchy, hierarchical tree. Cool. So, yeah. All right. And one other thing um, that's worth my mentioning is that. Um, 
properties are also inherited by their parents. So, for example, if you specify a color uh, in an um, in, in, in a parent component, for example, because of the changing lights, the world turns, you know, gets a red hue, um, then all the children will inherit that particular hue of red, will be applied to their color, uh, unless, of course, they are exceptional, they are overridden on that child level, right? So, <laughs> but that's the idea as well, that um, uh, it will inherit properties if not specified otherwise in um, the child perspective. So how is that internally uh, represented? Internally, it's referring to the idea of a, a directed acyclic graph. So it's not a strict tree representation um, in, in which uh, branches um, don't link and overlap, um, but it actually allows um, links between links links between um, children nodes across different branches of the tree representation. Right. So that's a classical tree representation. Uh, where everything is uh, linked downwards, but you don't have any lateral connections, connections between different uh, nodes. Whereas in the direct acyclic graph, you can do that. You can actually link to um, uh, children that are um, <coughs> linked to another part of the entire graph, but you can't link upwards. So you wouldn't be able to link from 11 to 3, for example, to the parent node, because then you run risk of potentially getting, uh, um, in this case, you wouldn't, but in, in principle, you could get into loops. That's the uh, problem. So you don't want to have any loop relationship emerging here. Um, what's an example that would, would produce a loop here? It's a very different perspective from here. Uh, sorry? <laughs> Is the left one a tree? Because it has two parents. Have to find one. Again, sorry? 10 to 5. 10 to, oh yeah, 10 to 5 would be a nice loop. That's right, thank you, exactly. So that, that kind of uh, behavior is illegal, that's why it's downward. Uh, Jonas, you had a comment? I was wondering if uh, yeah, that's that e, actually right? is a tree. Because of the E, right? Yeah. Because of the E. It's also a direct, di uh, direct acyclic graph, because it has a shared component. Yeah, it, that's, yeah. that's right. It was a tree, you had to remove one, one of them. Yeah, that's right. So in a tree case, you, you can't merge branches, right? So, so that's the key difference. Think about a tree structure with merged, potentially merged branches, right? So that's the idea there. Because, for example, one object may um, interfere. Oh, now I need to go and come with a good example here. Um, I'm getting there. Um, cool. Truck, truck transports car. Car has wheels. Truck. Um, ah. The hierarchy is clear. Um, both have wheels. Both have wheels. Both have wheels is better. Yes, exactly. Both have wheels. So you may want to have some sort of um, wheel representation that both those branches, uh, wheel representation, <coughs> truck representation, car representation, both of those can link to the wheels. Very, very good. Thank you very much. Along the way, they pro provide um, apply some transformation, right? So like turning and uh, uh, rotating the wheels, for example. But fundamentally, you use the same object. So that's the idea with the directed acyclic graph. You can reuse node properties, as opposed to redefining it for car and for truck, for example. Right? So yeah, that's right. So uh, that's the idea. Yeah. Nice overview. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? So that's probably the complexity you actually will have uh, if you have a more complex scene representation, right? But again, the pattern is quite clear. The only thing you need to watch out for is that there's no link going upwards, and we don't have any of those cases. And as long as we can guarantee that there's uh, no, no link from a child um, component to a parent component to, to an, or another branch's parent component, we can guarantee that there are no uh, infinite recursions uh, across this entire thing. Um, of course, states can be passed uh, down um, in this kind of intermediate sense as well. So you, for example, if you have a transition, ah oh yeah, that's the wheel example. If you, for example, have a wheel, um, that would uh, inherit the properties of the parent component unless overridden or otherwise specified. So you could overwrite them along one path. And in all other cases, the black uh, color would be uh, inherited for the wheel as a wheel property or for the wheel mesh, but only in one path, for example, for the car or the truck you could uh, apply a different um, property along the way. Cool. Um, so that's 
Yeah, so again, and here's the motivation quite clear for the uh, different wheels. So if there's a multiple of them, then it's obviously a lot easier to represent, uh, represent them. So um, realistically, the scene graph will be the one you no, you will use the scene graph that's provided with the tool of choice generally. But there's a number of scene graphs that are kind of semi-tool independent-ish uh, that you, you can just implement it directly in, for example, C++ or any language binding that is supported of your choice. If you want to do it natively, for example, in Java. Um, I thought the VR modeling language was that. Yeah, that's why it's listed together with the end. So with the X3D, right, this is the successor. Oh. But VML is pr pretty much dead, you're right. So like, this is the completely XML compatible successor. We talked about this thing last time briefly, right? So I had a few bit look at code snippets. And this actually has a full scene graph implementation. Um, if you recall, we had like a scene element and then transformation groups in there and then had the individual uh, objects like boxes and so on. That's precisely this one, um, that you had the hierarchical representation uh, built in. So it was actually quite a bit richer. I pushed it, it's actually a 3D, object format, but at the same time has scene graph properties as well. So it's a lot richer than, for example, the OBJ model, which you don't see on that list, because it really only works on the mesh level at the, at the, at the bottom of that very hierarchy. But um, yeah, so that seems to be the, uh, the, the go-to tool if, you don't, uh, if you're not tied down by a particular um, framework that you're using, and the key idea there. And, um, it comes with different components, so Open Scene Graph in this case has the scene graph and some rendering elements which have specializations that are, for example, focusing on rendering text only, or um, there's a, a sim module, um, there's different um, texture modules, um, I, an endless number of different plugins you can use and apply to renderable or drawable elements, they're called drawables in this particular case. And um, so those would be all the um, um, useful properties that are some that sit at the bottom of this uh, hierarchy, right? So um, of this of this entire um, graph hierarchy. And then you would use the traversers, which basically iterate over those uh, individual elements, or recursively go through the tree and actually visit the individual uh, components in order to perform some modifications. And how it's done internally. From a, from a technical perspective, um, the pattern they um, tend to be using is um, that you have some sort of um, element here. And this element, the only thing that this element actually does is some sort to have some um, in addition to its usual properties, it has some sort of uh, apply uh, apply method that is basically um, used to perform any modi modification and it takes as input a visitor instance and a visitor is a separate concept so this is a uh, not a UML fan but I'll try to see how it goes um, and then there's an element A, for example, a specialization of the element, and an element B. Right. So, and um, they obviously inherit the um, apply uh, functionality that's, that's uh, specified in the parent. And um, the visitor then, so, apply. when iterating over it, um, basically knows, has an implementation for those uh, apply methods, so every time apply is called internally the visitor actually does some modification to that are specific to element A uh, element or element B so the visitor is passed to the um, to the apply um, to the elements apply method and then the visitor internally uh, performs the modification it's uh, you know supposed to do on the particular element. So the visitor actually controls the modifications that are done on the element. The element itself doesn't do it. Yeah. So the idea is then that you use one visitor and have it transfer tra traverse across the entire hierarchy. So it visits all the component and knows what it needs to do because it knows about the state changes on the parent component, and then can, for example, do 
uh, matrix uh, modifications and change the state of the child element. So that's kind of the idea of the um, visitor um, pattern of how it works. So you delegate the functionality to a dedicated visitor class as opposed to implementing it in the child yourself. Um, that's the rough principle of... Um, and you would do this every frame? You would do that upon every change um, in, um, in for you know on a particular branch of the you know in a particular node of the graph for all, all children um, nodes. Yes, you would visit them again and perform the necessary modification. I just wanted to. And then you would simply have yep. multiple visitors, um, which could be multi-threaded. That's right. Yes, you could put. Yes, exactly. You can um, if. Yeah, but you need to ensure. Them, you give them a separate part of the exactly. To, uh, exactly. That's right. To you will need to control, be able to control that. I just wanted to bring up an ex example of that, uh, just to share the intuition um, for of Open Scene Graph, and um, we'll just try it. Sorry, stream people. That's probably the end of it. Um, and we're always getting nervous about anything that's remotely meaningful on my machine. Yeah, okay, that was that. Um, huh, and perhaps I can do something. Else. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. Okay, we need to do something else, which is I need to duplicate my primary screen. screen. So we have only one screen because it uh, scales across both screens automatically. Uh, the viewer that's built to OBJ. Um, okay, OSG, sorry. So uh, what I just want to show you to show the you don't see anything ah there you go cool it does nice patience patience there you go cool so that's the robot example um, OSG comes with a large number of examples and um, this is amongst the most boring ones but it has certain properties that make it that motivate the use of open, of scene graphs quite well. And that is the fact that it's actually a yeah, surprise, surprise, a robot, because it has uh, multiple degrees of freedom that uh, can be moved independently. Uh, for example, we have this first element, this first joint, which basically only allows uh, um, th this rotation behavior. Then we have a second one, we have a third one, and a fourth one, and so on. Can we do some rotation on the lowest level? I don't know, I think I mucked around with the code. Anyway, so the idea is that you have different, um, here's the scene graph representation quite clear. So you have the, this, this uh, parent joint, if you like, and the child joint is attached to that one. So any, any um, um, rotation that's, that's happening along this, um, this axis here will affect any of the child components, right? Even though I don't need to do a dedicated um, translation of any of those components, right? So in space, because it, it will be automatically managed for all depends. If you move the next lower joint, obviously the parent joints won't be affected here. In this case, the first component cube and this cube here, but everything has dependence and so on. So it's a very um, classical use of um, the um, this 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 this, this graph uh, idea. And how it's done in code, um, I'll just go through the code example because it's a tad, tad involved. So let's see and share some of the intuitions of how it could be done. So, um, so fundamentally, if we look at the API here, where it basically um, builds on the idea that we construct each of the individual joints using some sort of geometric uh, primitives then, and most importantly, have some sort of matrix that's referenced uh, by those ones and passed along to the, um, yeah, and, and maintained within that joint and every time a modification happens in a parent component, it's passed down to the children um, and um, then uh, applied to the matrix that is held by the children. And if, for example, a matrix modification would be done by on this level, for example, here, it would again only be passed down to the corresponding uh, children. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. Um, I come so this is the keyboard handler. I come back to that one uh, in a second. It makes a bit more sense when I sh after show some of the examples. So just to see how everything ties up, I go to the main method first. So you, you may get an intuition here. So main method uh, sets some details uh, and stuff like that. Um, 
set default angles to zero for everything and adds a keyboard handler and then just loads the scene data uh, by using the um, create shapes um, function. So let's look at create shapes just to get a feel of what's happening there. Right, and that's that one here. So this one basically uh, creates a, a group. Um, so it groups individual uh, shapes in uh, of the of open scene graph components. And what it fundamentally does is to create a, uh, the parent matrix uh, that sits at the very top and um, makes this a, a child, this, this, uh, trans this, mat this transformation matrix a child of the entire group. So it's grouped together. And from there on, it becomes quite interesting that we have the individual joints that are built and then attached. So in this case, the first joint is attached to a parent uh, transformation matrix. The next lower joint, joint two, is attached to the first joint. Um, then there's uh, the, the tube is generated. We can look at some sample code for this one. And again, the tube is connected to the uh, third joint. Then the third joint, uh, um, the fourth joint is attached to the third joint, and so on. We have yet another tube that is uh, coming out, and so on. So we build the entire hierarchy until we're fine uh, at the end having this kind of robotic, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, effect or kind of uh, mechanism that you, you saw briefly there. But the idea is there that you basically build this uh, construct systematically. Ah, there you go. I know what I did. I broke something. There you go. That looks a bit better. So if we run that robot again now. So, um, and just by changing this hierarchy, you can actually modify um, the whole graph behavior. So let's see. All right, that looks a bit different from before. So now the effect is actually where it's supposed to be. No, don't do stuff. So there's the end effector at the very end. Oh, there we go. Sorry? Oh, yes. sorry. Yeah, I was on the project a second. Yeah. OK, yeah, it seems, seems to take a while to pick up. It shows a bit faster here. So um, so you know, you have that, that's this end effector thing that sits at the very end. And then you have the next joint attached to it. And those are the tubes that are built uh, as part of it. If you are. If we, for example, then um, joint six, hang on, hang on. <coughs> if we, for example, attach the joint six to, ah, it doesn't show stuff again. Wonderful. Sorry, stream people, I have no idea what you see in the meantime, but. Um, they see none of, the, not, none of this. None of this. Okay, so I guess uh, for the stream person, just download the uh, open scene graph um, code, compile it, which takes you half an hour, and then run the robot example that's provided with it and play with the code. We're just exploring the um, create shapes um, function here. It doesn't show anything anymore, does it? It died. It died. I broke my machine. No, I broke everything. Is it still on? Yeah. yeah. Everything broke. All right, let's, let's search again. Hopefully it comes up again. Please. No, it's on duplicate, so. Yeah. Ah, not good, eh? Hmm. Be a bit more. Is that more radical? No, I just basically want to, uh, there you go. It should come back in a second. Right, so um, what I did just now, good question, what did I do just now? All right, so um, so joint six, for example, I attached it as a child to join two in this particular case, right? So basically as a child to the first join, we'll just bring it up and see what's happening now, because now it should attach the this end effector thing here, basically pretty much to the um, second um, join. So you're not loading this from file, uh, you're generating it all on uh, runtime? Um, the, are you generating the scene graph on uh, runtime on startup? Yeah, that's right. I'm not loading from file. You could do uh, generate the scene graph like this and export into a file, OSG file, and then you see the representation there. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the alternative way. But literally, that's the recommended way of doing it, right? So to inspect and understand the OSG syntax, if you like. But uh, of course, yes. Seriously. I, I, I shall. <laughs> no, really. 
hold up my laptop to show what's happening or not happening. Um, <laughs> come, on. come guys, have, have some empathy and use your eyes a bit. So um, now you won't see anything. Um, no, it's just, it's just not working. I need to. I'll probably take screenshots or something like that for the next session. Um, <laughs> I, I, I continue that motivation see how we get it on the screen because I think it's worthwhile exploring it. But the idea is literally that you model the individual components independently and just tie them, tie them uh, together. Now it comes back up, I don't know. I definitely need to get a more juicy machine in the long run here. So, um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's go through it next time. It makes more sense. So, um, so then we can talk about the dependencies and how you construct it from, uh, from uh, from first principles. Cool. Anyway, um, you got the gist. Yep. We do a bit more on that uh, on uh, Monday or, or next Friday, depending on this one. Um, yeah. So yeah, coming back to the assignment, I just want to clarify that. Please, if you want to do the curiosity task, right? So that was the second one. Please um, think about something over the weekend and then come up with an idea on Monday, and we can refine it and see if it's you know. Was thirty percent. Just remember that the main features need to be lighting. Uh, what was the other thing? Open model loading. Keyboard mouse things, right? Yes. Uh, model loading implies textures as well, right? So texture handling is quite important. I'll probably make that more explicit, but those should be the key elements there. Um, so please, please uh, think about this if you want to drift off and not do Pac-Man 3D. Yeah. So any other question? I saw some a morally concerned citizen over there. Tetris 3D. Um, you said um, that OSG would automate something. Yeah. Well, how much does it automate? How how far? Where does we take over? Yeah. Where do we take over in uh, like oh. if we, we use it fully? Um. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I I show you the the. Can you see? Yeah, you can. So where you can hook in is basically where you apply a rotation. In this particular case, some sort of matrix uh, operation on a particular component that you specify in the hierarchy. Which in this case, for example, is a rotation on individual joints linked, mapped to keywords, handling also, uh, so on. But you could do any of those operations on a particular joint. And then... Um, Does it load the file for you and build up the hierarchy automatically? In this case, it's built. It's built at runtime. It's by compile time, so it's not yeah, read it's from a file. We code it. You would uh, possibly encode it, yes. So, or you use that file. Literally, there are OSG files. I so bring one up, and you can use it. Um, I have to load the file. That's right. Manually. That's right. You yeah, would need to load it. it. I, in fact, can show you the robot file. Hang on. Um, there you go. So it gives you some. some intuitions about the, yeah, but <laughs> I wouldn't suggest that you start parsing that yourself because um, it is separate into separate elements. Um, here's the individual elements and it has a, I believe those are the individual rotations that are supported um, there, but the point is there's no even explicit uh, specification, so um, you can generate your model and just load it then afterwards um, and, and use it with OSG, but it's probably easier to build the whole model from fly, from, so from scratch. Just use the library, is the library. You can use the library, of course, yes, to not, do that. Not the files. Not external files, but if you want to export your model and you quickly load into a viewer or, or the like, that's the way to go. But if you want to uh, build your model, you will need to use some sort of um, um, uh, either OSG itself or a tool that supports, or, uh, supports OSG. I'm not sure Blender does it, I probably may. So you can actually specify the hierarchy there, export it as an OSG file, and then re load it from uh, OSG. Yeah, but if you don't understand the form, you can't load it. No, no, using OSG library, of course. So you can load it. You can yes, load yes, 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 of course, okay. sorry. <laughs> yes. So the point, no, no, literally, um, we had to, I'm not sure if you, if you heard that, but the idea is there's literally no specification for the OSG file format. Yeah, I heard so, that. You heard that bit. So, and that's that's the way to go. You build it, you export it. How you build it is your problem, right? Either using other tool or, you know, uh, uh, C++ will chat about it. Yeah, I was just asking yep. if, if there was a file loader in the OSG. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Of course, yes. It has a file loader included that yeah. you can just use and um, operate on. Of course, yeah. 
And you're free to use that if you feel inclined to do so. There are various other scene graph libraries. We won't require it for any of the uh, assignments and so on, but it's probably important to know about the existence and see, or no, understand rather eventually uh, how it actually ties up if you use any of the uh, conventional um, uh, development environments like Unity and so on that they in the background have precisely the same concept uh, that they apply. But uh, again, we'll briefly go over the code next time. I think we have mobile in like five, no, 10 minutes. Or are you guys not keen more or just continue? Probably not. Marsh may be a bit unhappy. So, yeah.